So, wow, you guys, you really seem to like this coloring page. So I just wanted to show you my setup in case you were wondering. So this is where I put my camera, my, my cell phone. And so that's how I get this, t like, over the top of it kind of a view. So what I did is I have this little old side table that I use all the time for my art stuff. I have a bendy clip lamp that I attach to that. And then that clip lamp is holding a, um, a little like bendy tripod. So I kind of like MacGyvered my own little extension arm by using that clip lamp. But yeah, wow, you guys really liked this video. So I'm going to finish this today, I hope, so that way I can get it posted for you guys. Um... Anyway, yeah, so just a little background on, like, a behind-the-scenes how I filmed it. Um, oh, here's my colors from the other uh, page I'm working on. But anyway, yeah, so, so here's the setup. All right, thanks for watching. Bye. Okay, I took a little time out from the time lapse because I wanted to show you a quick tip. So I'm probably going to actually extract this and put it in the quick tips as well, but I'm going to include it in the video because it is part of this page. Um, so I want to show you how to blend with a white Crayola crayon. So... There we go, that's a good... So how to blend with a white Crayola crayon. 
So um, first of all, when I do clouds, I always work in circular motions for the most part. And this is to allow it to have that fluffy feeling. But I don't try and hide those marks. So what I'm doing is I'm just going over the color that's already down. And I'm just blending it in with my white. And just with adding this last big layer, I'm burnishing. I'm pushing the wax down into the grit of the paper. And I'm also pushing the pigment around a little bit. And this is blending everything together. So this is a really nice way to blend your Crayola crayons. And I just also wanted to take time out to say I am no way sponsored or, um, you know, I'm not being paid. I didn't get this box for free. I got it a long time ago. Um, here, actually, I want to show you guys. This is an antique at this point, I consider it. This is not my first box of crayons, but apparently it was the last box that I bought in 2001. It's a Benny and Smith from Easton, PA. Um, and uh, that's actually not that far away from me. I think we actually got this box perhaps at the Crayola factory. I remember going to the Crayola factory. So anyway, I, I've been using these since I was a little girl. Um, so I really, really enjoy working with them because um, it brings me back to my childhood. So anyway, now I'm um, just I'm just working through and blending any spots I see are going into the white of the paper. I'm just blending that out. Here, let me and I'm I'm pressing really hard, so it's hard to like I I want to get an up and down so. So here, actually, you know what, maybe for this demo, one moment, I'm going to actually take it down um, and just um, show you handheld really quick. Uh, just bear with me. I know this is not going to be perfect, but um, you really get a good sense of, let me pull out. Okay, so here we go. We're, we're going to hand hold this, so I apologize. It's not, it's not going to be perfect, but let's see here if I can. That way I can do the, the strokes that I want to do. Okay. So you can see how I'm... Pushing down really hard. Try it this way. And you can see how it's pushing the wax around. Some wax is coming off of the paper and becoming like wax dust. Right? And I'm just like moving this wax around in circular patterns. Really trying to get down into that the grid of the paper. And this will give those clouds a nice fluffy, solid feeling. So that, my dear friends, and you see how it, it looks? I think it looks rather nice. Here's the overall view of it when it's pulled out. So I can show you here, like this area is without any burnished blending, and this is with the white. So there's my quick tip for today. You can totally blend and burnish with the white Crayola crayon, just like you do with a white colored pencil. Um, it is different. It's um, The wax is a different feel, but once you get used to it, I rather enjoy it. Um, I also have some other quick tips, but I will share those a little bit later on in my channel. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. I hope that you enjoyed this. Don't forget to like and subscribe. That helps me out so much. And um, I hope to see you next time. Bye.
Alright, so I'm going to get started as I talk. But I just wanted to um, welcome you to my quick tip for today. And um, what I'm going to be doing is actually this flower here. Um, you can see how I finished off this flower. I might come in and put a little bit of crayon on top of that gel pen, but that'll have to happen tomorrow. Um, however, I probably won't. I kind of like the way it looks right now. Um, so I'm just right now outlining every petal, getting rid of the black. I just love this technique. I think it takes it to a whole nother level. Um, it doesn't work for everything, and I do select of areas. Like, I'm not gonna do everything. But, I do the entire outside of the flowers because these flowers are a very light violet almost like a like a lavender type color is what I was going for so I want these black lines to be gone that you would not see those if it were a darker flower I'd probably leave it but um, it's a pretty bright little flower, so well, let's get rid of those. And you guys have already seen videos of me doing this, but I thought I would show you again. Uh, mostly because this is one of the questions I get asked more than anything, is this gel pen technique. And so I thought I'd slow down for a moment, take it in real time and show you how I do it. Um, I don't, I won't do everything in real time, but I will show you other bits and bobs too on the bird, like the metal, I'll do that next. Um, so now I'm just going into the interior areas and this little blue thing, I don't like the darkness of this outline either. So, I'm just getting rid of that as well really starts to make it look three-dimensional when you also put a highlight like I'm doing. Usually I just do like a C shape, like a half a moon kind of a thing. Or like, a, or like an apostrophe kind of shape depending on how it is. Now this one I'm just going to put a dot. So it really does depend on the area that you're working in. Okay, so now I'm going to come in, and this is where it starts to get tricky, so anywhere where I can really easily see the black line, I'm going to get rid of it, but anywhere where the black line kind of fades into the darkness of that brown in the center, I am going to leave. I actually like the way that the black outline gives it depth. Um when it's in the dark spot and also same as my gel pen um, what I would do if if I if I went over it all then I would have to go back over it with crayon and I just don't think that that's so I actually did more on this one than on that one and you can see the difference so I think I'm actually going to go back in on this one with, with crayon later. And now for a final finishing touch. Ooh, this spot's really waxy. I think it's going though. There we go. Alright. So you can see how using the white gel pen selectively 
kind of a nice way to add dimensionality to your work. And also, um, really teaches you a lot about light and shadow. If, you, if you're doing it this way and you're not just doing it everywhere, but you're really trying to think about where the light is coming from, then you will um, progress and learn about light a lot faster. So um, I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you did, um, please like, subscribe, comment, any or all of the above is much appreciated. And as always, until next time, I hope you have a wonderful, magical time coloring. Bye!